Hey guys, Canadian Saint Nick, back again with a Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense tutorial. This time, of course, we're going to be doing our final Storm Shield Defense tutorial on Storm Shield Defense 10. We're going to be versing 140 enemies in all their glory. Um, before we get too into this, I just want to give a big thank you to Traveler, who's donated his Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 7 through 10, so that I can help you guys get these tutorial videos out. He's been an awesome support about it, and uh, I hope to get everything. Uh, or I have to pay him back one day. I'll put it like that. Um, now, we are placing Amplifier I, which is our northernmost amplifier. Um, I don't have the map fully unlocked there, but uh, there should be eight amplifiers aside from this amplifier. This makes nine, um, which we are placing on ten. Um, if you didn't already know and you're just watching this video from the start, you do place all nine amplifiers in Twine Peaks. Um, if you're including the main storm shield, then you have ten. Uh, 10 places to defend potentially. Um, now, with the coming of Storm Shield Defense 10, um, you get a lot of structures back. Um, you are able to destroy Amplifier B over there and Amplifier C in the crater here. Because once we placed Amplifier F on Storm Shield Defense 7, they stopped coming from the north on C. And obviously, if, if you've placed your amplifiers exactly like Traveler and I have here, your amplifier I will now nullify the zombies that come from the north, or the husks if you will. Um, so obviously amplifier C can no longer be attacked. Um, amplifier B is a little bit harder to, to discern here. Of course the meter drops now like that. Um, amplifier B gets attacked from the north every, every storm shield all the way up to storm shield defense 9. So it, it almost doesn't look like they can, or it... Like, it doesn't look like Amplifier I can block them coming from the north, but believe it or not, it does. So Amplifier B is no longer going to be attacked on Storm Shield Defense 10, or whenever you place your Amplifier I. Um, so you can just get rid of B entirely. Uh, well, a special note though, if if you do uh, neglect to put Amplifier C down in the crater, they, st they can still attack from the west on Amplifier B. Um, but the crater side is, is one of the easiest amplifiers to defend, and that's why I put it as my Storm Shield Defense 3. So if you want to watch that guide, uh, Storm Shield Defense 3 is the guide there. I'm just kind of waiting for this meteor to drop before I get too into this. Um, now when I did my Storm Shield Defense 10, I tested it out for myself, and I had really, really easy time with it, because whenever I tested it out, they always came from the east. Uh, now that made it really easy to defend because obviously I didn't have to defend it from the north and the west. I also had a special tip from a friend saying that anytime you place this amplifier, the first wave would come from the east. Now when I went to go do this as a stream, I had to put my foot in my mouth because they attacked from the north two times in a row. And then I think from the west once. And uh, I had amplifier C all built and I think B was partially built at that time. So I didn't really have the structures to defend other places. So we, we nailed it down on E, on the east side, if you will. Of course, the meteor stays over here now. Um, but uh, for the most part, I'm going to be building up all three directions. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, hypothesizing, if you will. But for the most part, it's going to be A-OK, -okay, guys, because I have done this before. I am a quote-unquote professional. You can trust my word. I swear I'm not going to sell you bath salts. Um, so... Without further ado, I'm going to get started, but first thing I'm going to do is get started on the east side, because I know the east like the back of my hand, and once I get that nailed down, I can probably figure out everything else. Um, now, we are going to start at the very top here, so I'm just going to run around and go back up to the top. I'm trying to get this meteor to drop like it was before over here, um, but it, it doesn't seem like it wants to cooperate, so I'm, I'm just going to neglect it here and and maybe it'll change. Um, now, if you have Amplifier B up still and you're like, oh man, I gotta destroy it. Well, you don't have to destroy all of it. And some of the things you don't have to destroy here is this little barricade that I made for my Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 3 tutorial. Oh, so then, uh, yeah, Amplifier C is Am uh, Storm Shield Defense 4. That's right, that's right. Sometimes even I forget that you place one on each Amplifier. But on uh, Storm Shield Defense 3 here, when we go over the defenses for B, you notice I create this little blockade. Um, you want to take it to level 3. Um, as always with my videos, I'm going to take it to level 2. Um, but it should already be up for the most part, with the exception of this. I think this is a, a two-thirds wall made out of brick. Um, switch that out to metal, if you will. It'll be absolutely fine. 
Um, and then you're also just going to block it off. And then you're going to go up here and you're going to block that off. Um, now you don't need to go too much farther. Um, I believe on mine I block this off as well. Just I don't know. I don't know why I did. There's no point to block it off there. They do spawn up here. Uh, right about here. Um, I don't think I was too worried about them coming up and around this side. Um, but if you were worried about it, you could definitely add a little something like that. And then just add a gas trap. The only thing that would go around because this is so out of the way for Amplifier I would be blasters. Maybe a flinger, but you're not going to get a flinger attack wave on Storm Shield Defense 10. Um, so you really don't have to worry about too much going around here. If your position is sitting up here, then some of the regular has will come beat against it. But again, you know, 130 gas traps, those are going to be more than enough. Um, we're going to level these up all the way. Um, we're also going to add a little insurance here in the form of this. And a little wooden wall like that. Um, just just to help funnel them over here. And now over here we're going to create a little 2x2 two two box. We're also going to block the top of this because we don't want them walking over. Um, now we don't want to funnel them here. We don't want to create a little blockade here because there are going to be propanes here. The wave for this one is propanes and smashers on Storm Shield Defense 10. Um, now that's just because of the way I placed my amplifiers, I believe. Um, so I'm not sure if this one will always be propanes and smashers. I take this to level 3 because I like it as a vanguard defense. Um, there's going to be a lot of zombies coming uh, later along through this little avenue. Um, so we're going we're gonna to want the most from it. Now if you've watched my previous videos you also know that my wall dart with the wall launcher combo is very well thought out. Um, Wall darts don't have impact on them, so they can't stagger an enemy next to the wall launcher. If you do stagger an enemy next to a wall launcher and the wall launcher goes off, there's a chance, uh, usually about 60% chance, that it won't actually knock the enemy back and over. So you're still wasting use on your wall launcher. The enemy is not knocked back, and they're just going to keep walking through. So there's a lot less damage going on. Um, now, obviously, that that's just... A massive issue especially if you're dealing with smashers which we are on this wave um, so keep that in mind and don't do drugs kids um, also don't put a wall dynamo next to that which is the main point but um, don't do drugs is always a good point now they drop down here uh, normally when I do my little two by twos um, I call them 2x2s, two of course, because they are a giant waste of resources, um, unless you do two consecutively. Um, but as you can see, I only do one consecutively. So I'm going to add a trap that does more damage, um, because obviously the wall darts deal negligible amounts of damage compared to the wall... Oh, excuse me. Compared to the wall dynamos. But they reload faster. So I want to pair them with a trap that also reloads relatively fast. Now, I don't have great retractable floor spikes, but they're more than enough for this. I would know because I think my retractable floor spikes were less than that uh, when I did it. Or I might have got uh, Reaper to make me his 130s. Uh, but either way, the, you know, they're, they're comparable now because they have those blue rolls on them. And if you've watched my past videos when I detail all my traps, you now know that 106s with blue rolls on them are comparable to God rolls from previous traps. Now, if you, if you had like all orange rolls on these, um, they would be comparable to like 140 traps, um, if not a little bit higher. Uh, but for the most part, we just want a little bit extra damage on these squares for the enemies that pass through as the wall launcher is reloading. Um, and so they're, they're going to be coming along here. Now, I'm going to make these floors out of stone, um, especially these ones as well. Uh, I don't really need stone. You can make your floors out of wood if you really wanted to and you're short on resources. Uh, however, I, I just like the added durability. Um, now we are going to create the true 2x2 two two, um, to help conserve on resources. Uh, we are going to make our ceiling pieces out of metal, uh, simply because metal is the most durable. So if, if our awkward propane comes by, uh, we could probably manage it for a little while. Um, I will get up to this top part in a moment here. Um, ball launchers are for ob obvious reasons. You don't want them beating against them and then going around your trap tunnel. Uh, so we put wall launchers there. You could add a wall dart if you wanted to here, but that's a waste of a structure. Not a, not exactly needed because you're already creating an easier to funnel way. And you're also creating a wall launcher system. 
which sometimes gets destroyed. And that's okay too. Um, if you wanted to, you could even... God, I hate that meteor. That meteor changes too many times. Um, theoretically, you could go like so. This would also deter them just as much. Um, the only problem is there's also another meteor that drops like right here. But uh, normally these walls on this hill are completely safe. Um, if you do it like this, I mean, if, if you've watched my Twin Peaks Stormfield Defense 3 guide, you know that I place walls there and there's there's no problem with it. Um, so you could do it like that if you're really worried about that meteor mid-wave. Um, for the most part, though, anytime that meteor dropped was initially in the first wave, so I just put these wall back up, um, put my wall launcher, planted my base further along where I'll tell you where to plant your base, and then I just left. Um, so the meteor didn't proc on me because I wasn't near it anymore. Um, just one of the perks there. It'll probably drop again while we're building, so I'm not I'm not especially worried about it. Um, now, if you wanted to, you could put a wall launcher on this and just kind of keep them kind of geared up on here. Um, now I have two different wall dynamos that have alternating reload times on them. Um, one would hit p particularly harder if it crit. Um, so there's about an, over 9,000 damage. Uh, difference between my new wall launchers which have damage reload crit rating and crit damage um, just to increase kind of the floor of the damage itself so it could take out regular 100 husk at my level um, I do recognize that when I did this uh, I had dynamos that were much worse I still have the legacy roll I believe um, so these are legacy rolls they're original dynamos that I just got uh, obviously the damage is worse off than you know my double crit rating double crit damage ones but it does have a superior reload speed so it just created its uh its its damage over time and it's really hard to get through 61 durability on dynamos even with a heavy base plus 30 percent reload speed so i you know i didn't really worry about reload speed too much uh but it's nice to have i'll admit with one reload speed on here and we're getting 8.5 seconds plus the 30 percent from heavy base um we're really doing a lot of damage overall they're really literally about every six and a half seconds uh give or take uh, a decimal uh now if you wanted to like i said to alternate the damage you could absolutely do that um i'm going to opt for a more damage right away approach um i just i feel like it's it's better um the more enemies you knock off the tunnel further further in or right off the bat the less uh pressure we're going to be putting on our wall launchers further along um so right here right here um, so just keep that in mind when doing it i think that meteor dropped and actually didn't oh no it did destroy it okay that's fine like i said um, absolutely no problem um, now we are going to be putting a wall dart here because it is next to our wall launcher. We're going to add tractable floor spikes here. And here. Uh, yeah, we did, we did retractables all the way through here. I just wanted damage. I was a little bit worried about 140s, but to be honest with you, I don't believe they're true 140s. Um, I also wanted very minimal pathing here. Enough to give the wall launchers... Um, a little bit extra boost because they're not slowed normally normally i love to put those wooden floor spikes down you know uh obviously if you watch some of my videos you know that my wooden floor spikes they're high level and uh a lot of people probably call them unnecessary but i love them so it uh it's a big difference when there's no floor spikes on it uh they pretty much don't care about about you know any kind of pathing itself so they'll walk down here as soon as his way and then come down here and it's it's kind of annoying uh for the most part you can put another wall there um with this little extra blip it gives the chance for the wall launcher to at least hit you know one or two of them as they come through this square now as for these i'm gonna go full damage on these um, I do not want wall darts on the back end to get anything that comes through. If they are coming through these first three slash four squares of this tunnel, um, it means that they are smashers. 
because everything else will die. Because you know what we're doing? We're putting down these 130s with double crit rating, double crit damage. Um, now, they're not the best gas traps to be having on tunnels where you, you're having the enemy walk through. Uh, obviously, I've, I've mentioned numerous times before, if you're going to be using this kind of roll with the gas traps, you kind of want to create a gas room where you can make them sit underneath it, let that crit damage from the natural gas trap take over instead of just the affliction damage um, that the damage scales off of. Uh, so... It's not, it's not the greatest, but it's more than enough for 140 enemies. Um, if you had 106s with fully legendary perk up, even if they were just crit rating, crit damage, as I have here, that would still be more than enough for these first three squares. Um, but because this is Storm Shield Defense 10, uh, you're probably, you know, if you're like Traveler here, who's level 95, um, his tech is a little bit lower than his offense. Don't shame him, guys. He's doing it his own way. Um, plus, we all have trouble with our survivors, after all. Uh, but you probably are lacking in terms of tech anyways at this point of the game especially the way they are streamlining the storyline so something that deals extra damage and crits often you know it could really raise the ceiling and and be the difference between an easy and a difficult victory um, what we're doing here is magic yeah i extended this I know, it's crazy. You guys will be like, whoa, it's magic. I know. Double jump. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just gonna put that there. That'll be for later, but uh, for the most part, you can just focus on this tunnel, build as I build. It's, uh, at this point of the game, you've probably watched me enough to know, um, you know, what I'm going to build, how I'm going to build it. Uh, so you don't need to worry too much. Just have fun. And remember, you're here to kill everything as much as possible all the time. Um, yeah, we got wall darts, wall darts, got the wall next to the dynamo to create the gas room, mini gas room if you will. Um, now for this one, I'm going to go four spikes on this last one and retractables for these, just to create a little bit last because if, if a smasher comes through this tunnel, then it's it's going to be the weakest tunnel um, that can possibly be made on the east side. Um, now, that's not to say that the damage is weak. I mean, we could create a 2x2 two two on this, um, where we put a wall launcher here and knock them over here, um, as well as on this square and just kind of funnel them out and then build down. Uh, however, what would most likely happen is they would just beat against the square, drop down and then go to the base. Um, so we don't want that to happen. Um, I, w I should, shouldn't say most likely. That will happen. Um, Wish I could. You're going to have a lot of trouble with smashers being against this wall itself. Um, oh, that's not what we want. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create this. You serious? Um, now when, when it's all said and done, if they attack from the east here, this is where you're going to be want, wanting to put your base. Um, and what will happen is you'll put your base there. I went over this in my Twine Peak Storm Shield Defense 10 walkthrough uh, before I did my Storm Shield Defense 10. Uh, but I was having problems with smashers beating against this wall and then walking through here. And then uh, we're adding stairs, by the way, all the way down here. Um, it was enough for me. I think I added a second set of stairs right here so that I could get up. That was fine. Um, so we upgraded this to three. Obviously, everything else was going to three already, um, including these ceilings that I forgot to upgrade and that wall over there I forgot to upgrade. Uh, but you're going to put your base here, and then you're going to swap this back to here. And in that way, you're creating an, another wall that that smasher would have to walk through instead of coming over here. For some reason, the AI really hates going towards a a 
uh, floor piece that is just hanging over midair. And if you played the game long enough, you probably recognize that too, where they really despise these hanging pieces. They don't view it as a piece that they have to walk to or through or around. So they especially hate this. This is hanging over it. So we have to create as much um, proxy or you know whatever you want to call it. We have to create as, as much incentive for them to come through here and then down here, even though the amplifier is over there, even though this is the quickest path to the amplifier that they could take, they really hate it. And, but it's also good in a way because all the regular zombies will actually path down here and around here. Um, now, I mentioned that there are propanes and smashers that are going to be attacking this on Storm Shield Defense 10. And you're probably thinking, Canadian Saint Nick, um, why are you putting a wall launcher at the beginning of your tunnel in every other propane wave you say beware propanes don't stack them up on one square well that's because I'm using my 106 wall launchers which if you have been following for a long time you now know that they are triple impact double reload speed they are going to toss them back three squares so it's one two three squares now because of the pathing of the zombie themselves um, the earliest they could be they, they can be shot out is right here so they're not going to be stacking up enemies because most enemies will either be right there or they will be on the square itself and of course the latest is right here so it'll be tossed back right over here um, now when they're tossed back on this square it could be close enough where they actually come all the way around and thanks to this giant rock behind this wall they won't actually throw their propane tanks at it directly it can be a little bit of an issue at times uh, but for the most part they come down here and up here and this wall launches them back they're just going to hit this wall and then tumble down right here wherein they will then be affected by this wall launcher this retractable floor spike and this gas trap uh not wall launcher this wall dynamo sorry um now that's not going to block any of the wave this is kind of like the weird square of the game where you can't actually block them up on this square just by putting a wall launcher right here it's nice it's convenient uh, when I first did this, I blocked this off, and it created a big old cluster of zombies, uh, so I did not want to stack them up on that. Now, as far as this tunnel goes, I believe we are almost set. I'm going to block off my view from Traveler. He's a good lander over there. He's got the exclusive blood fly in your AC, but uh, I'm tired of his face, so I'm just going to put a wall in front of it. Uh, now, if you're also tired of most Outlanders in your lobbies, don't do what I did, because that is a little bit trolly. Um, try to work together with your Outlanders. Create a better team. And I'm not just saying that because I'm Canadian. Um, now, I hope you're paying attention as I put down all of these walls. It is a little bit difficult. Um, however, we are going to make it easier as well by adding these stairs. Um, now, as far as wall launchers go, you're going to want a wall launcher right here. And you're going to want a wall launcher. Uh, depends where you put your stairs on this one. So obviously we're going to be taking everything to tier 2. Well, I'm going to be taking everything to tier 2. You want to take everything to tier 3. This this little shoot, if you will, you don't need to take to tier 3. Um, but if a propane goes off in it and it's tier 3, odds are it will survive it. Because uh, one or two propanes will be detonating close enough to the chute yeah. itself. But if you leave it level one, um, it will for sure be destroyed. Um, now we're going to level this up while I ponder uh, where to put the wall launcher on the other one. It is important to get that floor piece down because if you have noticed, we are building over thin air. Now we're not going to build anything out and around and down, you know, make it all complicated. That's nothing. Uh, we're just going to be putting a simple wooden stairs here and that's more than enough. Um, I gotta create a little pathway here because we forgot to put a wall launcher. Um, theoretically, you want a wall launcher right here, and then you want you could do the slant like so. Um, however, you risk when the the husk or not the husk when the smasher if the smasher beat against this wall, um, they will walk up on top of this and then beat against this wall and then this wall launcher um, if it does activate might not be as useful um, so I, I would advise stairs and just do it like so um, you don't really need this mesh to go underneath them um, it's just a, a little bit of an added deterrent, if you will, and you're knocking them back into the tunnel. Um, so it's almost as if the, you're deterring the smasher. Now, if you have a really big problem with smashers being against this, as you probably will once or twice, what you can do is you could come up here, you know, maybe put a jump pad below for, you know, if you're jarheading it, and just add wall launchers on the inside of these walls. Um, 
we are going to be adding a wall launcher on the inside of this um, just to kind of keep them underneath traps a little bit longer. Um, obviously, we're going to be putting our last gas traps here. And then as far as coming out of this tunnel goes, we are going to be putting our ceiling zappers. Now, my ceiling zapper deals ridiculous amounts of critical damage because I have crit rating and crit damage as I have most, on most of my traps. I feel kind of noobish at times, uh, especially when my single fire wall dynamos have one of each. Um, if I had enough perk up, I would probably put my ceiling zappers, uh, you know, comparable to my wall dynamos with the damage and the reload speed. So maybe don't do what I did. Um, however, I just wanted to have a little bit of a big bang. I didn't, I don't care about reload speed on my ceiling zappers. If anything makes it to the end of my trap tunnels, um, as most of you have watched my storm shield defense, uh, defeat, nothing really does make it to the end of my storm shields. But if it does, um, usually about once every 30 seconds. So a reload speed of once every 12 seconds doesn't really matter too much to me. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind switching out one of those crit ratings for damage itself. Um, it would be nice if they had a, a kind of a constructor with a base that increased critical damage of traps. Um, especially because, you know, every other class has a, you know, increased so-and-so critical damage with, uh, you know, weapon A or weapon B, uh, for instance, the Ranger. Um, now, as far as this goes, this very last one, we are actually going to be making a half partition wall simply because if they get to the square, the quickest path to the amplifier itself is through here. So uh, that is that is our purview. Um, I would advise putting a wall there, otherwise these smashers will actually be like, what? I could smash? And then they'll they'll start charging here, and then they can end up taking it this wall, which is kind of annoying um, to replace time and time again. Not a big deal by any stretch, but annoying nonetheless. Again, anything that drops down here is going to be smashers. Um, so just by putting a retractable floor spike, you can kind of get away with uh, a little bit more damage. Um, now we have sorted out the top part there so we could close that off as a ninja I can close that off um, I do have to actually get up higher luckily I have these stairs right here um, I wouldn't advise creating too much of a pathway down here because that can increase the uh, the proxy on these ones um, if you want to decrease right here you can just create a little bit of a cube on the end uh, just for a little bit of extra protection if you will. Um, now you have noticed that these walls keep getting destroyed by the meteor. I'm not going to replace them until the very end, in which case I know that Traveler and I can then back out and we could save those walls from being destroyed. However, knowing my luck, they will probably get destroyed by meteor right before we leave anyways, and then Traveler will be forced to uh, replace them. Not a big deal though, because I'll be leaving Traveler with a decent amount of traps in case he wants to just fool around with 140 enemies. Um, now, as far as all that trap tunnel goes, that is completely finished. Um, so if you have been watching thoroughly, you, uh, you're probably a little bit impressed. Um, I, it is not finished, actually. I lied to you guys. I apologize. Um, what we are going to be doing here is adding another little blip right here. Um, now, I did mention before that... Well, I didn't mention before. I am going to mention later. But I'm also going to mention now that when they attacked my Storm Shield Defense 10, I believe it was a water wave. Um... Obviously, elements aren't always on lock, uh, so it might not be a water wave for me. This is why I'm building all out of metal, however, when deterring them, uh, because I was faced with water, and uh, it, was, it was convenient. Um, it would be nice if they kind of set that in stone, um, you know, like water would be on so-and-so wave, on so-and-so defense, but uh, for the most part, I think, I think it is more or less set in stone. You could build another little cube here and block them off, but that should be more. Um, this is the over... I was going to shoot at it. This is the overhang, so they can't beat against that wall. You don't need to reinforce it. Uh, however, the wall launcher right behind there, some smashers might be like, if we beat against that, then we just walk around to the amplifier itself instead of dropping down then walking all the way around to the side of it. Um, so th that's just something we're taking care of in, uh, in one shot. <laughs> Now, as we come over here, we see a lot of trees and, you know, my penchant for nature. Let's destroy it all, but in real life, let's not actually destroy it because nature is beautiful, guys. Um, but for the most part, Twine Peaks, we are going to be annihilating them with efficient obliterator blast because that is what the obliterator is great for. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh, just like my brothers, guys. Um, here we go. Uh, we are now creating... 
the masterful tunnel that is the only time it will not be a waste of resources. Oh, this is probably too far away. Just too far away. Okay, because we are putting stairs behind it. Now, normally I do a mix of stone and metal. Um, if anybody's watched my, my guides before, you know, you know that I mix stone and metal. Uh, however, like I said before, um, I have extreme PTSD with water zombies. No, that's a joke. Um, PTSD is not a joke, guys. As I've mentioned in my Twin Peaks Stormtrooper Defense 5 video, PTSD is a very serious thing and should not be joked about. Um, however, just having as much deterrent as possible as the metal, it has the most health. Um, so theoretically has the greatest amount of deterrence, uh, will benefit you greatly. I guess I should create a little bit of a smiley face before I start filling in the teeth. This is the penultimate tunnel of death. It will, it will absolutely demolish all but the most hardy and lucky of smashers. It is far enough away and perfectly spaced. Um, there's no meteor that drops on it. You don't have to put these floors to, to level 3, to be honest with you. But these walls, you definitely have to put to level 3. Um, I'm going to put it all to level 2, just so you can kind of see the half amount of resources you could spend. Um, it'll be probably a little bit more expensive if, if you're not opting to put all these to level 3. Um, but the walls are going to be level 3 because otherwise if we toss them back 3 squares as we will they could just beat against level 1 walls with one hit as a smasher and destroy it um, but as level 3 they should take about 3 to 4 hits um, now I ran out of metal so I'm going to hustle back to this guys. so far so good we are doing one side which is pretty heavy on materials but it's not too bad um, we're probably nearing the 300 structure limit that I set for the east side. Um, now for the west side, I'm setting a tentative amount for 350, and for the north side, about 250. So as so long as we do that, we should be should have enough structures. Um, we, we should have some. Oh, don't die, guys. We should have some extra even at that. Um, now I'm just going to upgrade some of these ceilings. Ceilings are big to upgrade as well if a propane accidentally goes off because, you know, maybe you have some friends in there and no. they destroy it. Well, level 1 ceilings will be like butter. Hot butter with a hot knife. Um, so put, put them to level 3. Don't be silly. Wrap your tunnel in metal. Um, as far as the site goes, we're going to block it off a little bit. Not too much. Uh, we don't want to block this off. Yeah, that's right. Out of it wouldn't say I had a big issue with. Uh, just wanted to create a little bit of a kill box here. Okay, just like so. Because I'm finally growing a brain, I'm making my floor piece out of stone. Can't. Um, now, if you have fully legendary perked up all launchers like I do, 106s will be better than the 130s uh, legacy rolls. Um, so this is a legacy roll. Let's see if we can get these side by side so you can see. My 130s, despite being 130s, um, even though they're legacy rolls, they are vastly inferior to my 106s that are fully legendary perked up. This is the way traps are going now. If you have 106s fully legendary perked up, they are superior to 130s in the old game. Um, these were god roll wall launchers. Um, I was very happy with them. I got them really early on in the game, probably early Plankerton. And... Uh, they lasted me. I, I couldn't get rid of them, and I didn't really want to waste the perk up right off the bat. And I also had another set of God Roll wall launchers with the exact same perk. Um, and I really wanted to limit the amount of oxidize I had, so I made one of them 106 fully legendary just to, just to compare kind of thing. Um, they're ridiculously overpowered now. Um, so as far as traps go, you could absolutely do. 
have the 106s there. Um, now, you can put a wall launcher here. They'll toss them three squares back over here. Um, here's, it's a bit tough too because you can't can't dodge it too well. I wasn't too worried if this trap tunnel was going to be destroyed though, so I just kind of experimented with it. It worked out relatively well. There wasn't an abundant amount of enemies that came through it, but there was a decent amount. Um, now we're going to be putting oops, four spikes here, four spikes here. Wall darts next to our wall launchers. Uh, we're also going to be putting these so they could shoot over these uh, little one-third walls. We're going to have Dynamo, dynamo, dynamo. Um, I'm using my reload speed dynamos. Um, find them to be very effective. Put a wall launcher here if you wanted to. Gas trap. Um, I would advise putting a ceiling here and a gas trap here as well. What will probably end up happening is a smash will come through. He might walk through this tunnel to try and get around to this side. More likely he'll walk through the other tunnel because it's quicker. But uh, pathing's weird sometimes on on 10 they take uh, entirely new angles all the time so what will end up happening is they'll walk through this tunnel and if you've watched my storm shield defense 9 and 7 walkthrough i tell you if you build this one third wall and the wall launcher is so close to it and it has enough impact to knock back it kind of lifts them up when it knocks them over it arcs them back to that third you know second or third square so the farther they go the higher they arc um so as three squares, they will definitely be knocked over this, and even though there are some wall darts and whatnot, um, if there's a propane tank, the gas trap should be enough to take it out before it detonates as he, he gets up. Um, you could even put a floor and a retractable there, but I'm fully confident in the 130 gas trap, so I could save on structures there. Um, again, know your traps, know your tech damage, know your damage overall, um, because you won't be the same as I am. I have a lot of tech now. When I did this, I think I had about 1,800 tech. Um, and I think I was around level 110. Um, so there's a big difference in my in my tech damage now, but that's only because I've been investing in my tech squads now that I finally got some legendary survivors for them. I think I'm still missing a mythic lead in one of them, and has half half of them are epics, which is more than enough. But it's it's not as invested as I wanted to be. So just be mindful of this. Um, if there's a smasher over there, though, uh, he won't. He won't die under the gas trap fast enough, so he'll destroy this, but essentially you just create a little 2x2 two two here anyways, so it's not a big deal. If you wanted to break this apart and just create a 2x2, two two, that'd be absolutely fine. Um, it's just, you know, there's a little bit extra structures with the floor and the retractable there. Now we have... Oh, I gotta go back to the other side. Batman. Um, so we come back over here. We're gonna extend this. A tad, and then we're going to be putting two floor or two walls right here, and then we're also going to be adding four pieces right here. And for our constructor days, if you so wished, you could make a jump pad and put it right here. I'm not though; it's a little bit of a waste of resources. The main reason I say put a jump pad here is because uh, I do like so actually. That way. Yeah, nothing's going to get up there. Uh, just your base. Your base will actually reach the end of this when you put it on there. Um, so it'll just help it reach reach downward a little bit quicker. Okay. Now, you don't have to put all these to level 3. I would advise, you know, level 1 or 2 at the very least. A random propane blast. It'll at least survive and save you some resources in uh, making it all over again. Now, as far as... This side goes, it's more or less taken care of with the exception of the traps on the bottom tunnel. However, I wanted to say something, but I can't remember what now. Ah, well. We're going to be adding a wall launcher here for the stray, stray smashers that get through. Now, simply for nostalgia factor, I could put 130s here. They have less durability, so I'm not. Um, but these 106s just as good. They will affect 140 smashers, no problem. Uh, there's going to be a lot of volume coming through here. I mentioned that they spawn up on the cliff over there where I marked danger. They also spawn over here. Um, so this is the quickest route to the amplifier from this spawn. So there's going to be a lot of volume and uh, I'd say probably about 60% of the volume is here. Um, we're going to be alternating our retractable floor spikes here um, in a stroke of genius that I had. 
um, when I originally made my storm shield. Um, but 130 is equal to 106 floor spikes here. I tend to notice a difference with the power level. Um, however, you might not. I don't know. That's entirely your choice. Um, because we have heavy base as our slotted constructor and support slot is going to be, you know, shuriken master to increase ability damage, which will ultimately increase our tech damage, which will ultimately increase our trap damage. Um, we don't have to worry okay. about... Uh, we don't have to worry about damage, we don't have to worry about reload speed too much, we don't have to worry about length, we just chunk out the damage as much as possible here. Now, electric fields we are going to be placing here in the middle because we're going to be tossing them through this square. You can put a gas trap here, however, when they get towards the end here, it's only going to be one or two zombies, uh, maybe even a smasher. They are going to be afflicted by these gas traps plenty. Um, so it, it was just a little bit it's silly to put uh, a little bit extra. You could put a ceilings after on these last two if you really wanted to. Uh, just to deal a little bit of extra damage to those smashers. Um, generally, these first three will run out. Um, guaranteed, they will run out by the end of the wave. Um, on mine, I use 36, I believe, wall launcher durability. Um, and all but this last one were gone. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to put the entire tunnel to tier 3, but this is the most deadly tunnel of the game right now, um, simply because of the way they spawn. As far as this goes, you could put some... Oh, I built this too close. Um, yeah, I built this too close. Okay. We're going to go through a lengthy... Uh... We're going to go through a lengthy de deconstruction here, and I apologize for those who have been watching for the past, you know, 20 minutes or so. Well, uh, I've been working on everything else and just kind of neglected it, but uh, this side is is all too much. So what we are going to be doing is we're going to be tentatively destroying it with my super pickaxe as a ninja. Because this, this is the price we pay for structures that are, are useless. No. The walls behind this are useful. I say these are useless because the spawn is close enough that uh, the enemy will actually destroy some of these or will spawn inside of them and then of course they would destroy it anyways. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just destroying it. This is this is something you will regularly have to do at times in the Twine Peak Storm Shield defenses. Um, obviously we tore down you know B and C just so we could have enough structures to build I. Um, It'd be nice if they just gave us like an extra thousand structures, to be honest with you. I think that would be enough. Um, it'd also be enjoyable if they... This one's far enough away where you could probably just switch it off like that. And we're going to add some wall launchers, if you will. Right there. Nope. You could add a wall dynamo here if you wanted to. Just give a little bit extra damage. No big deal. Um, but for the most part, that is taken care of. You want to level up on the back side here. Uh -huh. Um, now we added the metal wall there, we're going to add another metal wall there, um, just so if they come and they eventually break apart this for whatever reason, then they can't just walk down and walk around, and pathing is really weird on 10. Um, I've mentioned that before, but I never really elaborated on it. Um, pathing is very weird. I don't, I don't know if that has something to do with their level or, or, you know, what they wanted to do with the level bonuses to the enemy, but it's, it's very difficult to nail down. Um, maybe it has something to do with the building health overall, uh, but just keep that in mind, you know, put all these to level 3, um, because we are theoretically not coming back to this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a wall launch here, and then I'm just going to walk away, because, uh, goodbye guys. Now, we have used uh, a little bit more than 300 structures on that side, which is fine. Um... If we need more structures as we go along, I can always edit. But uh, for the most part, that is the side I would not r recommend. I mean, you could, you could destroy the last tunnel on that one. I just like, I just like the little kapow of having that final tunnel, kill them all. If the, if a smasher makes it out of that final one, it's because the wall launchers. Um, earlier in the tunnel have already broken, they can't do anything about it. You could go into that tunnel and replace them if you are good with your uh, propanes. And I'd recommend waiting for a propane wave to pass through it and then have another pro another wave spawn in. Some waves won't actually have propanes in them. 
you could look at it. Um, you've created a nice big old stone bridge up top there you could just sit on top of. Um, just be careful though. If you if you do sit up all the way here, zombies will start coming up and attacking this wall. Propane's my proc on you. So, And if you come standing over here, you're above your tunnel. So propane's might, you know, just detonate it at their feet to try and get to you. It's, it's very annoying. Um, like I said, pathing in 10 is very weird. Um, but, I don't know, if you could wedge yourself between these two squares, you might be far enough away not to draw any aggro. Um, and then you can kind of see all the propanes or not propane spawning in from this side. And then what you want to do, uh, same way we did uh, for Storm Shield Defense uh, 1 tutorial, but our Storm Shield Defense 10 walkthrough, I think, about uh, replacing your wall launchers, pre-select it, hold it, jump in here, and just replace them as you go along. Um, and that'll that'll increase your killing tunnels efficiency once those are back up, you know, ex exponentially. Um, now, as far as the north side goes, that is all taken care of. 